Vita. Think how far we could go together, Morgan. Welcome, Uncensored Cinephiles fans, to The Northman Review, one of the best Viking movies of all time, I would say, Ooh. and another instant classic by the new Stanley Kubrick, as we said, Robert Eggers. Maybe. Maybe. Who knows? He certainly does his research, um, and uh, he puts in a lot of effort in his films into making it look authentic and recapturing what time would have been like in the, the setting of of his films. So uh, I think he's ded dedicated to his craft, which is, you know, just like Kubrick was. Yeah, absolutely. And I think he's done a really good job like he did in The Witch, mm. um, which we reviewed before, with Northman in putting us in sort of a great historical almost documentary type thing mm, with how accurate like it yeah. was yeah. you know like a living documentary of what it would actually have been mm. like has that feeling based too? on uh the texts that we have available mm. that describe you know what the viking life was like a lot of these texts come from like the medieval times which we'll discuss in a little yeah, bit yeah yeah but uh so the movie itself, maybe we should start by breaking <laughs> it down, starts yeah. with pretty much, is it the boat sailing? Or... Yeah. It's... Hear me, Odin, all father of the gods. Summon the shadows of ages past, when the thread spinning norns ruled the fates of men. There's a, there's a sort of almost like a, the beginning to a, a, a saga. You have the the sort of person saying to you know talking of addressing to the gods mm -hmm. really. And then oh, that's the, right. Yeah. Like it's introducing the the like tell me a tale sort of thing. You know, sort of getting us sort of 
amped up for the, the film is a and then I believe it's like we see the the, the volcano yeah you do yeah yeah so it's you know setting you up to what's going to happen at the conclusion mm -hmm. um, but you're getting kind of like Revenge of the Sith sort of vibes with the epic um, fight near lava <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, true. Yeah, Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, <laughs> but I thought um, so. You have the volcano there, but mm. the volcano is very symmetrical, almost pyramid shaped, mm. and this would be a theme like throughout the film. Yeah. You'd see this mm. like pyramid shape. You'd also see a ton of uh, you know Masonic sort of symbolism yeah, you would say throughout that the there's movie. There's a lot of symmetry. shots are set up yeah I mean I think that's a very again kind of reflects more of Ego's understand cinematic language yeah. and as how to like his shot so almost like a painting in lots of ways like so there's a lot of um, him sort of calling back to what's been seen in previous throughout uh, cinematic history and art history but I do feel like it's obviously got more of a, a deeper meaning than just being a callback or a sort of a nod to histor historical art. Yeah, I think you're right in that. That is a note to those things. But I think it also, like the symbolic meaning of it mm. is he, the main character sort of being initiated, mm. right? In yeah, he's, he's um, gaining a higher perception uh high perceptive sort of he's becoming more aware of like he's reaching enlightenment mm -hmm. yeah that's what i was yeah. trying to say <laughs> sorry yeah. but yeah we have a the of course that we're first introduced to him as a child yeah so um his name is amleth amleth Oh yeah, yep. Is that Amleth? Yes. Or something? So, yeah, it's, we didn't look that up. I didn't look up to see if the yeah. name had meaning. It might, but. Uh, yes. Because his, his witch movie, all the names had meanings. Mm. Maybe all the names have meaning in this movie as well. I didn't even think to look that up. No, no. We've, we've been, I've been so preoccupied with looking into the mythology of <laughs> ravens. Uh, how raven friend that's just suddenly turned up in our garden so yeah. um it, like i haven't even thought about looking at the names but uh that's usually what we we do don't we we sort of look at the names used in in the film and they do have a sort of a significant meaning so um yeah unfortunately we've not done that this time but i'm sure we'll probably discuss it at some other point mm -hmm. um, but so so after the volcano mm. you have speaking of the ravens the two <laughs> ravens right yes flying over mm. the boat as it approaches the kingdom mm. and the kingdom that is like you know their norwegian kingdom i guess it's in norway yes um is uh like very pyramid looking as well mm. just like the volcano so like as the boat's approaching it's like it's approaching the kingdom like the pyramid like it's all like in alignment as well yeah. right and you have like yeah. the two ravens the two ravens are odin's ravens mm -hmm. who are uh, were my one was I, I don't know the actual names, but one is meant to represent mind and the other is meant to represent fault. Mm -hmm. The uh, Odin would set them free in the start of the day and they would fly all around the world. They were like a supernatural sort of entity mm -hmm. and they would listen to everything that was in, see everything that was go taking place and then report back to Odin. So it's, you know, there's a lot of, I'm sure we're going to talk in more depth about Odin um, 
See, like... It's, it's, he's a very strange god. Yes, he is. And, like, so, like, as you're talking about the two ravens, right? Mm. And all the things you just said, like, the two ravens were sent out, right? And then mm. they came back, and then they told the all-seeing father, which is mm. what they call Odin, right? Yeah. They told him everything that they saw and, like, all the deeds of man, right? Mm. That's what, like, uh, those are all characteristics of, like, Satan as well. Like, Satan was supposed to be the one accusing man of sin in heaven. That was, like, mm. his role as an angel. He was like, look, man's doing this bad. Man's doing that mm. that's bad, right? That's where, like, Satan comes from, the name, like, the accuser, right? And then you have the the story of Noah releasing mm. not just the dove, but also the raven. Yes. And it says in the King James Version, the raven flew to and fro, you know, mm. after Noah released him. So he uses the terms to and fro. And then when God asked Satan, where were you in heaven... The ra uh, Satan says to God, I was going to and fro, mm. right? It's the only time to and fro is in the Bible is when Noah releases the dove and then when Satan is telling God where he was, yeah, right? And, yeah. So, and, like, the ravens, to me, represent, like, Satan. Yeah, right? they're, like, um, embodiment of him, aren't they? They're, like, part of him. Yeah. And that's so, what I find interesting with Odin is that their association with Odin. And I think a right. lot of people, uh, when you research into Norse mythology, I think a lot of it nowadays has, it's all become like that Marvel movie with, you know, that's the whole Marvel universe. So that's what people just perceive like Odin and Thor and Loki to be like. But really the, the gods the Norse gods are a lot they're not like good they're not necessarily there to do good things no yeah um, and uh, the Odin is like not necessarily like the, the, a good god he's he's you know there's a lot of sort of dark stuff that he does and the fact that he um gave up his eye in order to gain more wisdom is something that's obviously very interesting especially when you sort of look at um <laughs> well um certain how losing an eye to gain more wisdom is perceived you know yeah and he tries to kill his brother's son which is Fenrir mm. which is the wolf right mm. Which, you know, at the end comes back for vengeance during Ragnarok. And then Odin has yeah. to fight him and all this. But the, the thing about Odin that I find interesting is... Why are all these, like, Christian aspects of, like, the Christian religion woven into who we identify mm -hmm. in the modern day as Odin? Mm -hmm. Well, we talked about this in a cicada stream where a lot of researchers are now finding that the like source documents about Odin and these other gods mm. were written by medieval like writers yeah. that were Christian writers. Mm -hmm. So like they were taking stuff they were finding and then they were adding Christian elements to it. Right. right? So was Odin hung by a tree? the same way that Jesus was hung by a tree, like Jesus was hung on a cross, which is made of wood, which is like being hung on mm. a tree. Or was that something a medieval scholar added to the story of Odin? Is it too, right? maybe because they're, if they're trying to convert a pagan <clears throat> uh, populace into Christianity, they mm -hmm. want to sort of say, oh, uh, it's very similar to what you already know. You know, exactly. Your, your mythology is is say is virtually the same, so you might as well practice what we're, we're practicing. What we're, yeah. That's basically what happened, right? Mm -hmm. So you had like a lot of you know medieval Christian scholars change mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff. So now we have all these stories that don't necessarily match. 
Mm-hmm. So you have like these gods from like you know Viking history that have like differing traits and they don't always the stories don't always match up and like you know what I mean mm-hmm. it's like it's just like a big mess so you don't really know like we don't have good documentation on who these gods actually yeah. were to the Vikings so <clears throat> I think Eggers did a really good job of taking like the best information that we have mm-hmm. about them and putting it into like a film you know that represented like the most yeah. accurate information but still it's how do we even know what's accurate really i mean what we can go off against is uh is also archaeological archaeological remains and yeah. there's human sacrifice that does take place in this movie mm-hmm. and um at first i was like confused because i don't remember that ever being associated with the vikings yeah um i thought human sacrifice to me was more of a sort of Mesopotamian you know very BC sort of thing before you know yeah um, before Christianity really to see it sort of being practiced at the time now you know I think the film takes place in 19 not sorry 955 AD or something you know very close to you know with the it was well, the 10th century you mm-hmm. know that seems very Probably uh, the to me that seems like a very early time, but also like a very um, modernistic time because it's like coming up to the medieval era. So, um, but there are uh, archaeological sites that have been discovered where there is a there are bones left behind that look like they've had, you know, uh, that have been sacrifice like the people who have you know died in that way that they implied that they they were sacrificed and there's also like a discovery of a well where there were lots of um infant corpses mm-hmm. so that seems to me like um you know the fact that these the children were tossed down a well yeah um rather than given proper burials seems to imply to a lot of scholars that that is um you know human sacrifice Mm -hmm. and we see in the movie how um when there's a raid on the the village they round up the children or anyone that they perceive as being a threat and burn them alive also the uh, young woman who is you know sacrificed um, when the older son of the uncle dies so uh, and there's also um, animal sacrifice that takes place in the movie so yeah. it is a very much like a world where um, sacrifice and religion and religious sacrifice is very much like a you know goes hand in hand yeah it's like you have a religion where people are worshiping nature mm. right and they're wor- they're like we need to do these things in order to make sure that you know the climate is the right uh temperature in order to make sure mm. our crops grow and we have to like make sure that we're worshiping nature as like a religion almost mm. as if it's a cult and then we have to make sacrifices to it yeah. like not eating meat and having smaller populations by sacrificing people right it, it's almost like that's a bad thing and that's been seen in the past as a bad thing and it's almost as if that's happening again in the oh, oh wait we're talking about the movie so oh sorry back to back to the movie <laughs> i know what, what you mean though but it's very much like um yeah the 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 just this connection with uh you know like you say nature and religion because you see the tree of life yeah. in the in the movie so mm-hmm. but back 
let's go back a bit and sort of talk about uh, the start of the movie. Yeah. Um. You know, so we're introduced to the ki- um, the king. Yeah. Um, and the very sort of frosty relationship between him and the queen. Yeah. And what I find interesting about that scene is the fool, who's played by Willem Dafoe. Mm-hmm. Um, who's also the like the witch. Yes, he's right. also like the, a witch doctor or yeah. something. It's very like a, I don't know how to sort of, he's a fool, but he's also like a wise man, you know? So mm-hmm. he, he says... The wise man plays the fool. Yeah. Right. He says to the court that the, the queen is... Uh, her cup is thirsty for the uncle, you know, for the brother. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he was right. He was right, so... Yeah. I thought it was interesting, too, that the the king rode in on his horse. Mm. Like, he didn't get off his horse until he was all the way into the, the chamber in front of everyone. Like, he's riding in on a high horse. <laughs> very symbolic yeah Yeah. right and he was Mm. kind of like a douche like someone like that you know like get off your high horse dude and like you know come down here with the rest of us And he gave off that kind of air about him. Right. right. He's, well, we've discovered some more information from him, about him later on. Yeah. Um, of course, that's coming from an unreliable source. So how much of that can we believe um, in terms of the... Yeah, Nicole Kidman's character. She, yeah, she tells Nicole that. Kidman was that back again. We saw her in Eyes Wide Shut. She, uh, yeah. she again, playing a... A sexually repressed woman, maybe. Yeah, a like promiscuous a, woman. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or a woman that isn't faithful, right? <laughs> yeah, I think it's interesting that he picked her for that. Like casting mm. choices like that are always really interesting. Yeah. Um, she has that wild look in her eyes when we yeah. first see her when um, young boy sort of like stumbles into her chambers and she's just like holding on to that fury. He's here. Mother, father is here. Never enter my chambers without invitation. The king, my lady. The king. It's a like, but she's so close to exploding. You know, it's like a, you know, a very sort of. Uh, to me, it looked like a, a wild banshee or something. Mm. You know, it's a very or like a, I don't know, like a siren or something. Like she was just gonna sort of like there was something eerily magical about her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, and Nicole Kidman's like one of those actresses that, like, she over the years has maintained her on-screen presence. Mm. Right, if not even gotten like better than she was in her younger years Mm. where a lot of like the old school Hollywood actresses because of like Twitter and other things have like you know they've kind of ruined their careers like no you can't even look at them to say you can't watch like an Amber Heard movie or anything, you know what oh, I mean? Oh, you couldn't watch like, one anyway because she's a terrible actress. Yeah, but, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I, just, I, I don't know. <laughs> but there's other examples like I, that, I, right? Yeah. Actresses that were good that have, like, ruined their career in the recent years. Mm. Nicole Kidman's, like, just, like, you know, she's, like, still the eyes wide shut actress, right? Yeah. I think so. she's um, someone that, like, has maintained her so her beauty but it looks kind of natural although she must have had i think she's had surgery but probably um surgery. but it doesn't look t- like madonna levels of that's kind of what i mean madonna's <laughs> yeah. like a clown now. <laughs> you know, like she, nicole kidman hasn't done that and she kind of like gives off this like air of being like one of the uh elite hollywood inside witches <laughs> it's like like real life actual witches just my personal opinion I don't know if that's true or not <laughs> but <laughs> oh I know I can sort of like she does have that sort of supernatural 
quality to her. Yeah. Like, almost like, oh, is she a vampire? Yeah, you feel like knows, she's yeah, like maybe always <laughs> has always been Nicole Kidman. She's just yeah. like changed her like name throughout yeah. the past. Yeah. Um but yeah, so like, anyways, I thought the relationship between her um yeah. and the, the king who was played by Ethan Hawke, I believe, um that's interesting. You know, it's like uh she's been waiting for a while to get you know go to bed and he's just like no I've got other thing, more important things to do with. yeah he's like I'm gonna go hang out with the witch doctor okay, <laughs> hi <laughs> taking this on it's time for him to learn how to be a man I did find it like when we first watched the movie mm. um the kid was so excited for his dad to come home mm. he was like mom 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 dad's home and she was just like whatever like, I got that yeah. sense the first time I watched mm. the movie, like, and I was kind of thinking to myself, like, why isn't she more excited the King's back? Like, I yeah. literally thought that watching the movie. So, that, that like... Come. Odin brought him home. To find out later. <laughs> Obviously, our reviews all include a ton of yeah, spoilers. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, people don't... Like well, I don't think people watch these going like, oh, I won't, uh, you know. Find out about the ending. We're <laughs> analyzing the ending as we're doing this, so. But, of um, course, that scene where, um, it's a weird scene. The, the enlightenment, enlightenment scene with the, the witch doctor and the... Mm, yeah, let's again, get into that, yeah. Oh, I don't know how to get into it. It's so... All right, well, so first... so much that goes on in that one scene. First, I think I want to say that mm. it's obviously a reference to Plato's allegory of the cave, mm. where like you enter the cave unenlightened, mm. looking at shadows on the walls, mm. and then when you exit the cave, you're now enlightened, mm. right? You know about like, like you've seen that things aren't like all that there is, that there's more than just yeah. the shadows on the wall. Mm -hmm. Right, there's more than just reality, so I think that's like mm -hmm. obviously a part of it because they're running on all fours like dogs into a cave looking thing. Yeah, right. So again, then sort of the animalistic is kind of like at the beginning <clears throat> of 2001 Space Odyssey, is that what kind of reminded me of? And I think we have that. There's chanting and the wailing sounds as well, Spray, which, yeah. um, you know, supposed to sort of like, I don't know, it's like the animalistic sort of pre, you know, pre-dawn of man sort mm -hmm. of thing going on there. And yeah, they do act like, like wolves, which is, um, again, very tied up to Norse mythology. Mm-hmm. So then they do the ritual, mm. so they take the hallucinogen, yeah. which is like the mead, which was a very, like, that's a very standard thing for Vikings to have done, was mm. like, drink that kind of stuff, and then have these, like, vision journeys, you know? Mm. I mean, they didn't have, you know, VR headsets or PlayStation, <laughs> so they had to, like, go on journeys inside their own mind, which mm. is what they used to do, which was, like, drinking broth made of some of the grossest crap you could probably imagine and uh they had it like their little good. no it's probably like... drink the fish in need of knowledge to learn what it is to live and die in honor to be in battle slain and in death rewarded by the valkyries embrace the warrior maidens will carry you to the shimmering gates of Valhalla probably like piss and probably like <laughs> disgusting like herbs i'm pretty and... sure it had like bits of bone floating in it it looked really gross oh you know what it definitely had in it mm. 
mushrooms. Ah, uh, I can. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the bits of bone were okay, but the mushrooms no, got no, you. I'm not a big fan of mushrooms. <laughs> you are fine with the bone, I'm but fine. it was the mushrooms. I'm that not got doing you. mushrooms. <laughs> I guess I won't ever be enlightened. <laughs> not in the Viking Not in the Viking it. No. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so they do that, and I thought the the vision sequence was relatively. Uh, meaningless, um, but I did think they said some interesting things in there. Wise in measure should each man be, yet wise enough to be the fool. Wise enough to be the fool. Tell me, how did Odin lose his eye? To learn the secret magic of women. Never seek the secrets of women. What did you see during the little ritual? Well, I, I know he has that. He did this wonderful bit where the camera pans up and it's a point of view shot and he's looking down on himself so he's clearly like out of out of body experience and that's when he's reached enlightenment because he's now above himself Mm-hmm. So that's uh, I can't really remember what the the um, dialogue was, but what did you get down? Okay, so a couple of things I wrote down mm-hmm. on here. So we know how they're acting as dogs and animals. Yes, yes. Well, in MK Ultra mind control programming, what they have you do is cr- a lot of times create like an altar that is an animal. Oh, so that's okay. why you have in Hollywood, you'll see a lot of times Hollywood celebrities will be uh, sex kitten programming. Right. Yes. So you'll see them in like leopard print for no reason a lot and like things like that. In a lot of the times they'll have like head bands. The little ear, yeah, yeah, the headband, the ear bands. You've seen this, right? Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. This I goes all the way back. I think of a lot of different um, examples of that. Examples right? of that, yeah. Um, so that's from like Monarch Mind Control, mm. MK Ultra, right? This is called, uh, it's like an actual thing that you can look up. It's called like, you know, Animal Altars, mm. right? And we saw a lot of this. I broke a lot of the symbolism down in the past. Um, <clears throat> and I found it interesting that Willem Dafoe was used for the Witch Doctor mm. because Willem Dafoe has recently done a whole bunch of work with Marina Abramovich, including a whole vision series on like a virtual reality vision art project with Marina Abramovich that was done with Microsoft. And it was like this very strange art project where you could see Marina Abramovich, which is like a real-life living witch who does spirit cooking and other gross things, Mm. she, like, allow people to see her art projects in 3D. I believe that art of the future is art without objects. This is just pure transmission of energy between the viewer and artist. To me, mixed reality is this answer. The first thing that we had to figure out was you had to feel that you were in the room with Marina, not a document of Marina. HoloLens 2 was created by people who quite clearly have an interest in the audience forgetting that they are using technology. So the... Right, so like you go on a vision, right, Mm -hmm. thing to see her art. So it's interesting they picked Willem Dafoe, who was in these things with her, Mm -hmm. as the witch doctor to do like vision stuff like like it's just very similar Mm. in nature to that that stuff that he was doing with her and the vision mead of knowledge it was called they said drink the vision mead of knowledge right right so once again that ties into the the raven that you're talking about Mm -hmm. with the knowledge and like the whole tree of knowledge which is the tree you're not supposed to pick from When he see when he he sees his like family his family tree and is it's like the DNA being passed through 
the yeah. tree of knowledge, yeah. right? Like Which, they're all part of the tree of knowledge, yeah. right? Yeah. all the lineage of the house of Cain yeah right like it's very interesting to me like to be seeing this sort of like um, it's almost like he's justifying his actions because he's, you know, he knows his family history and also knows what is to come. Yeah. So it's like he's he's then justifying all of the acts that he does because it's to honour his family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know how you're saying that um, Willem Dafoe was the jester in the court? Mm, yes. Willem Dafoe, in the little ritual, says to him, wise enough to be the fool right mm. that's one of the things that yeah. he says to him during the little ritual there mm. right <clears throat> so it ends with the the child floating in yes. the air yeah which was wicked similar to the witch yeah right where they're all floating after the ritual at mm. the end of the little rich uh, witch ritual they're yeah. all floating in the air I thought it was very similar to that, right? Yeah, I mean, and another thing that's kind of similar to that uh, is kind of like, I think we recently watched Room 237 mm -hmm. documentary on The Shining, I and mean, most of that we disagreed with. But it was something where someone said, like, the layout of the Overlook is on different levels to what it's actually supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And then, so, Danny goes on to a completely different, like, level Mm -hmm. like is this spiritual awareness yeah and i think that you just saying that reminded me of like that that's how it is you know yeah he's like floating off he's the hotel floating, yeah and he even though stanley kubrick doesn't do it in the, the way that we're seeing here with eggers eggers is more di direct it's not as yeah. subtle as kubrick kubrick's doing it in a very sort of like um Hidden, hidden yeah, yeah in a hidden way sort of like more suggestive so to the average viewer you wouldn't pick up on that you wouldn't notice that the the uh the path that danny is doing on the second floor do is com completely wrong it doesn't match up you can't actually do that path but he is not even doing it really he's it's all taking place in his mind Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, as he's like floating upward through yeah, the hotel. Yeah. yeah, which I can't wait for us to do on follow up to <laughs> <laughs> the shiny. I'm just getting people hyped for it. So you know, you thought our other one was good. We've got more to discuss. Yep. <laughs> We've discovered more things. But back to Northman. <laughs> so yeah, so the little ritual ends with mm. him seeing the DNA strand, mm. and then like it showing how DNA contains the genetic memory of your ancestors. Yeah, which is all very Assassin's Creedy. It's also very The Lost Truthy because I wrote that in The Lost Truth, my book. Yeah, That's right. I <laughs> and then I actually yes. went through and found the, uh, <laughs> but I actually, unlike the, the Assassin's Creed, I actually found the scientific evidence that backs up mm. that theory, which was, um, stuff like the bio, I forget, it was a bio, I wrote it in 2014, hold on, the Bioinformatics Institute of Europe mm. or something like that. Um, they had done a study where they had synthesized DNA in order to record information. So they had taken a painting mm. and then taken that painting and turned the painting into zeros and ones. And then they turned those zeros and ones into the four base proteins for DNA, which are like A, B, G, and T or something like that. And then coded those zeros and ones into those four proteins then synthesize that into actual DNA. And then they were able to ship that DNA around the world and then 
unsynthesize it and decode it back into the painting. Oh, so and what they yeah. found is that because DNA has four proteins, instead of just the zero and ones like computer, mm -hmm. that it's able to store significantly more data than a computer because it's four is a base four system. Yeah. Right? So like you can store a shit ton of information in DNA way more than you could ever a computer. That's amazing. Right? Yeah. And it will last forever because all you need is a DNA sample, which you can pull from like a mosquito out of like, you know, millions of years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Like in Jurassic Park, mm -hmm. you don't need to have like a power supply or anything. DNA lasts forever. So if you store information in that DNA, it lasts forever, right? So you apply that to like a whole bunch of different things. I thought it was interesting. It was in the Northman yeah, movie so yeah. blatantly. Yeah. And then of course, <laughs> let's, um, get to get past all the sort of like I guess the boring narrative stuff you know the king is murdered yeah the king's murdered in a you know uh, oh we saw that coming yeah everyone saw it <laughs> <laughs> Behold your brother's case in amazement. Yeah, he didn't see it coming. <laughs> <laughs> and then we, you know, the boy escapes. I guess the question with the, the dad is, mm. does that count as dying in battle? I don't think so. Because he was like shot in the neck and then he was executed. So does that count as the father dying in battle? Because he did kind of die in battle. Like, he was, like, fighting them, but he just, yeah, like... Yeah, but he, was it really, like, a, a, a glorious death? Or just that, like... Because he didn't really take anyone out with him, you know? It wasn't like... Yeah. He, he was... He didn't have a chance. It wasn't like yeah. a... I don't know. I guess maybe it would count... <laughs> I guess. And if Odin is a good god, yeah. like if he was like mm. an actual benevolent, like good god, why would his requirement for getting into heaven be you have to be trying to kill someone when you die to yeah. get in? Like, why would that be the requirement to get into heaven? That doesn't make any sense at all. No. Right? Like, no, it's all a bit weird, isn't it? What a backwards religion. <laughs> Well, unless you're trying to murder someone, we're not letting you into heaven. Like, what? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. But, um, yes, of course, it's, it all goes a bit horribly wrong and aimless. Aimless? It's his son's name, yeah. Yeah, he escapes and is, like, then on a revenge mission, you know. Can we talk about the escape just for a moment, though? Okay, right. <laughs> So it's dumb. For, yeah, it's dumb. First off, he runs like okay. So like thirty <laughs> people charge the dad, and the son just like runs. They just let him run away. Yeah, it does. Seem like okay. obviously they're gonna want to take him too. Like, yeah. So they just let him run, and then he doesn't run away. He runs like <laughs> under a tree, five feet away behind a rock. <laughs> okay, and then the king's like looking right at him. He's like peeking out from behind the rock like, with his whole oh, head. No, no, Dad, no! Yeah, like, no, they can't see me. I'm sticking my head out from five feet away from them. And the king's like, bring me his head, like, pointing right at him from ten feet away. There's, like, 30 people there. How, how does the, the child get away from the rock to the little, like, wood thing that he hides under? That makes no sense. I, yeah, well, what doesn't make any sense is that um, the the uncle would just be like, oh, where's his body? And the guy's like, oh, threw it in the water? And the boy is dead. Bat in the sea. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, he's I mean... just like, oh, okay. Well, you threw it. I want to see it. 
could you bring it to me? No. They're going to make sure he's definitely dead. I, I know where they got that storyline from, too. Who did they steal that one from? Lying Robert Egg. Eric, no, Robert Egg is these, the hijacking storylines here. He stole it from the Lion King? No, he's, <laughs> he stole like... that shit from SEAL Team 6. What? Remember they were like, oh yeah, we totally killed Osama Bin Laden. Where's his body? We threw it in the ocean! <laughs> No one's going to question it. No one's going to be like, oh, we won't, we can't drain the entire ocean. <laughs> Just take your word for it. Like, seriously, no, that's like literally, yeah. he stole that from, you know, well, I mean, you know, who wrote for them, probably Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit. Uh, anyways, back to. Uh... So it's many, many years later. Oh, wait, and then oh. the kid's running away. Yes, how is he? Under... He hides under the tree. Perfectly well hidden under mm. the tree. They're all running by him and at this point. And he decides to go. And then he decides two seconds after they run by him to climb out from his perfectly good hiding spot. I don't know. But then, like, no, movie, wouldn't, just... movie wouldn't happen if he just stayed still and, you know, that wouldn't be exciting. Like he had to... Why? Because there had to be... Because he had to cut the guy's nose off and he then later cut... kill the guy? <laughs> yeah, he had to cut... And then also witness his mother being, like, dragged away screaming. Is she screaming or laughing, you know? Yeah. It's, I think... I don't know what to make of that because it does... I know I've watched it a couple of times. It still doesn't sound like she's laughing at any point. Oh yeah, and then the, the 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 kid, he almost gets killed in the woods. He sees his dad get killed, beheaded. He goes back to the town. They're all looking for him in to kill him and behead him in. He's wearing a red cloak as well. He's like, not even wearing the red cloak at first. He's just running around the town <laughs> like, "Hey, here I am." He puts on a red cloak, which red, is like I, that's very symbolic. Like, yeah. once again, here I am, giant red yeah, cloak was, around me. Do also, like... Well, I wonder who's hiding under that red cloak, not showing his face. <laughs> also, it's, do you not think the red cloak is very symbolic as well? <laughs> yeah, of course it is, it's, yeah. But, you know, it's just like, again, doesn't make any sense, because I'm pretty sure red cloaks would... Like, the colour red would be very hard to obtain. I don't know too much about, like, dyes and stuff, but... Yeah. Red seems like, because I, I think red was, I'm thinking like in the original Robin Hood uh, folklore, he wore red instead of green. Because yeah. I think red is meant to be like for the merchant class. Mm, yeah. So it's very, it's like a very hard colour to obtain. Yeah. So I, in the world of the Vikings, I don't know whether that colour would be necessarily like easy to get a whole... The, hold of and have a whole cloak dyed red so must have been yeah probably I it's probably think... very expensive material it's just you know that's why it was probably associated with royalty and stuff right yeah it just looks like i know to... purple was really hard to get yes purple was very hard to get but i don't know about red so i don't know i'm just basing that off um something i had ages ago could be completely wrong oh okay I'm they do say red is pretty rare. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, uh, so he goes back. They see him, uh, he his mom getting dragged yeah, off. Yeah. The king and uh, the new king and his mom go and have their... Well, I mean, it's fake, right? So he's... She actually wants to be taken away. Yes. So what they're basically doing is like a rape fantasy, like LARP session, right? Of course it's the vikings what else do you do yeah that's, you know? that's kind of their thing when I mean, they're not <laughs> raping they're pretending to rape <laughs> <laughs> and then he runs off to the land of roos mm. which is that supposed to be england no i don't think it is you don't think it no, is no i just think it's a, some is it like denmark or something it must be denmark it's It's definitely south of Norway. Yeah, it's definitely 
like in that. I assumed it was like England. No, I don't think it would be. No. Although. Vikings were there at that time. Yes, right? yes, they were there, and they the busy coming around, sacking our our country and breaking St- our women, stealing temple stuff, and yeah, burning our churches, and just generally being right dickheads. I mean, that kind of makes sense if it was. I don't know. It just didn't look like. Um, I don't know where it is meant to be, but. Anyway, I was just thinking it could make sense because they would then go on to Iceland, which is kind of close towards the UK, right? Yeah, that's so, why I was thinking mm, the UK. I don't know, but either way, it's like he's now... Because he's on a river, right? Yeah. It's like, so it's either Denmark, because they have the canals, mm. or it's like England, because they have all the little rivers. Yeah, right, but he's England. going to go raid... He's like with these, yeah, this Viking group. I don't know what they're. They're, they're like just a... like a raiding party. Yeah. Right. and all like embrace like the wolf you know yeah so they they're part of like the religion that like is it's a paganist mm. religion and like they one of the things they're doing is like the wolf ritual it's like a fire ritual mm. once again very similar to what you see in the movie the witch mm. it also harkens back to like wolf ri- like wolf cults that they had like in yeah. rome and earlier places right these like pagan ideas have come all the way from babylon and things and basically, it's like the worship of nature rather mm. than the worship of the creator that made nature. Yeah. Right? Which is why it's all false nonsense and ends up, you know, those people end up being influenced by dark spirits and things of this Yeah, world. it's a very, right? like, a very dark <clears throat> scene, you know? It, yeah. He just, like, completely is, like, howling, you know? When we see him... Um, he just doesn't seem to register any like human emotions at no. all. Like there's, um, it's a really like he's not a hero to me. Like no, not at all. No, uh, it's nothing sort of. He's like, a villain. Yeah, I, I think the the Viking main character is a villain. Yeah, like absolutely. I think it's really. <laughs> I sent you some links to some articles, um, where people were like saying about him being like toxic um talking about toxic masculinity that little buzzword <laughs> um he's totally tossed was it talk i can't even say it <laughs> i can't even say it. <laughs> toxic masculinity oh, it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> i can't you even say, say the words you say it, to, you say it in the mirror three times <laughs> greta will appear behind you and stab you to death <laughs> um I think, like, people have really, like, perceived his character in the wrong way. Like, yeah. um, because it's, like, the weird sort of thing where, uh, all right people have, like, embraced him as being, like, the ultra, you know, like, male, like, the Andrew Tate type of thing, you know. Don't yeah. show emotions, like, yeah. you know, just go out and do what men, men do, you know. Like, yeah. kill, Andrew Tate, kill women and children. You know? Andrew Tate probably only cries when he's getting pegged from behind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but <laughs> but then the other like again other reviews that I've read have been like weird about the. Uh, I, there was one hilarious one where it's like started talking about like Donald Trump and I was just like, oh really? Oh, yeah, it's like. That's right. 
just like you know just why are we I, I just this is why people can't take number, film critics number <laughs> remember that one time remember Star Wars <laughs> remember the Northman <laughs> Take us seriously. So, we don't even take us seriously. Oh, this is a, well, this is a good review. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, it's better than um, it's better than any of the other reviews I've <laughs> heard better, on this, yeah. especially Jay Dyer's garbage review of this movie. Oh. There, I said it. <gasps> Hot take. Hot take. Ooh. Anyways, so Ooh. after their little fire wolf ritual, mm. their little cult ritual, they have. I mean, a bunch of other stuff happens, right? But the next, like, big mm. thing that I saw was they had, like, the ball game. Well, you've gone so far into the, <laughs> into the film. Okay, you, you want to go back? You miss, you miss, like, a big, massive chunk of the movie. <laughs> like, uh, the next big thing to happen was the ball game. Excuse me, he's gone to Iceland. He's gone and found, like, his uncle, and there's a whole thing with it. Like, okay, that, we'll go to that, that first. He met the other weird witch doctor. But no, no, like, that's that's like, no, that that's, hasn't uh, happened yet. That's ha or, that's already happened. You like? Did you fall asleep watching the movie and you were like, "Oh, ball game"? Okay, I'll write this. Okay, down. so the the sword ritual was. I thought that was. Okay, I guess you're right. That is before the, <laughs> the ball game. Okay, <laughs> my bad. My movie. notes are a mess, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just like all over the place. Okay, so yeah, so he goes back to Iceland as a slave mm. because, well, I mean, at the end of the Land of the Rus thing, mm. they take over the town, right? Yes. And okay. then at the end of that, there's that weird, like weird meeting with the the witch played by, what's that singer called? Bajork. I see you. I am no one's brother. It is not enough to be the man that never cries, Prince Amleth. The prince that turned from his fate. A beast that cares for naught. A beast that brings tears from the eyes of men. Yeah. Well, I can't remember how you say her name, but um, the the singer uh, Bjorn. What's her name? I don't know. You know, she was that famous singer in the nineties. Like, she wore the swan dress to the Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> Bjorn. Wait, wait, Bjorn. What? In the 90s, I was playing, like, Oregon Trail, not watching the Oscars. Like, I'd never watch the Oscars in my life. <laughs> okay, well... I don't know. I don't know. And this is why I have you on. You're the film expert. You know Hollywood people. I just know I conspiracies. Know people. I know of Hollywood people. You know of Hollywood. You know a lot more about Hollywood than I do. Anyway, she tells him that he needs to go to Iceland. Yes. Because he's got unfinished business. I thought the little meeting with her was really interesting because... She's spinning, like, the thread, you know, and it's like... Yeah. The symbolism there, and uh, she's had her eyes removed, mm -hmm. right? So she's able to see more as a result. She's more wiser. But she's also not really there, too, right? Like, it's all yeah. potentially just in his head. Right? Potentially so in his head, or potentially like another Norse god, you know, yeah. trying to get him to to go to Iceland, working with Odin. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he it's a very interesting scene, and of course, there's we see our buddy the Raven turn up later on after that scene when he yeah. decides to go to. You know, to cut his hair and become a slave, or you know, brand yeah. himself and 
swim out to a boat and get on and meet uh, Ogla. Ogla. Mm -hmm. So, who is played by the girl who was the witch in The Witch. Yeah, and I find it interesting because, um, so there was, you've probably never played it, but Call of Duty Black Ops 3. No. In that movie, or not movie, sorry, video game, mm -hmm. it's basically like with the cutscenes, there's like basically a movie along with it. Mm -hmm. And like what's happening is like the guy has got a DNI, like a direct neural interface in. I saw the human test subjects from the Black Project in Singapore. Something inside them screamed out in agony. It caused the whole disaster. It killed so many people. Relax. Breathe. But he keeps, like, seeing things that aren't there. Mm -hmm. Like, he keeps, like, getting further and further lost into, like, another reality. Mm -hmm. And the thing that's leading him along, if I, if I remember correctly, I'm pretty sure I'm right on this, is a raven. Mm -hmm. And, like, it's constantly, like, leading him further into, like, mm -hmm. psychosis. And he keeps seeing things like the witch, mm -hmm. like the witch doctor, where, like, you're seeing something that's there, but then, like, it's just gone. Mm -hmm. Like, after the little ritual is over and then you get further into the psychosis. It's, like, the sort of same, similar, like, path of, like, enlightenment to the dark side. Mm -hmm. That, like, Hamlet is going on in the Viking movie, The Northmen that's also like portrayed by the main character in like that third Black Ops game, right? Mm. Fighting by our side. A sudden uprising would catch the NRC off guard, weaken their grip on the region. Just like their attack on Ramses, we use it as a distraction to get on them. Once Taylor's done with, we find a way to get this thing out of our hands, whatever it takes. It's just sort of like a modern version versus like the Viking version. Yeah. Right? Um, this is interesting to sort of like maybe bring into all the stuff I found out about ravens. Yeah. Um, because we thought... The raven symbolism is amazing. The, the raven like, symbolism is amazing. And I, I, I got went down a bit of a rabbit hole <laughs> where I got very excited and I was like, oh my God, I'm finding all these weird connections where they like, threw out various religions, um, you know, across... The, the globe, ancient religions, and uh, you see the the character of the raven, and it's been seen as something that is evil. Mm -hmm. um, and you've already spoken about how it's, you know, brought up in the Bible. There are other various different, um, you know, religions where I think there's um, a Hawaiian religion, maybe, uh, it's where the raven steals light and gives um gives it to man uh you have to really steals light and gives it to man that sounds a lot like prometheus mm. which is basically the same story as lucifer which was like oh eat from the tree of knowledge mm. right giving mankind fire was prometheus right it's the yeah. same like thing right it gave mankind something forbidden yeah right and then um, in Hinduism, I believe one of the the, the gods, uh, one of the gods, uh, which is the embodiment of um, Saturn, uh, rides a a raven. Oh, yeah, of course. So yeah. um. And Saturn, as we've talked about, is very symbolic. Saturn mm -hmm. symbolism is symbolic, like to the occult. Yeah, but there's a lot of things where it's like uh, because the actual raven itself the bird is a very clever bird it can mimic um, other sounds mm -hmm. even human voices really and uh recognize human faces how, uh, how do they know it does that it's, it's crazy i know but uh and uh, it's obviously a, a bird that does doesn't kill uh but uh, goes after things that have been killed yep, yep. so it feeds on you know pe uh uh, you know dead things and uh, when you know it's still tied up into superstition now that you you see a raven it's you know there's like i was looking up online like because we saw two i was saying this all to you mm -hmm. when i was researching and then i look out of a window and there's two ravens in yeah. our garden i'm like that's weird 
Yeah. Like, I've never seen any rave, you know, unless, obviously, I'm not being paying any attention to it, but it was just... No, we pay attention, because we're always, like, we have the the hummingbird feeders yeah, out there we're always looking at. Yeah, we, we always... got the three bird feeders we put out, mm. so we're always... You know, I, I love looking at yeah. the birds here, because, you know, <coughs> the cardinals, and we have, like, the hummingbirds, and, like, the woodpeckers, and... Never it, any ravens, no, ever. No, no, and now that... And then, like, one day after we were talking about this, we had two <laughs> ravens. <laughs> two ravens. And then the next day they came back. And they were, like, so insistent on being in our yard yeah. that they were pissing Brutus off. <laughs> and Brutus was, like, chasing them from, yeah, like... and then... They would I land think, in the driveway, yeah. and Brutus would run into the driveway and chase them off. Then they'd land in the backyard, and he'd go chase them out of the backyard. <laughs> but, like, I said to you, our raven friends turned up. Yeah. And when I was, you know, downstairs and at my desk, and I look around, it's, like, sat in a tree just watching me, and I'm like... Yeah. Okay, this is weird. But, um, yeah. Very... All birds are government <laughs> drones. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would prefer that than them being like the embodiments of Satan. Yeah, so. it's probably not, though. It's probably like Satan's like minions watching us. But um, I just find it <laughs> very interesting in different cultures and civilizations. There's always been like this, um, the, the, how, how the raven's always been seen as evil or, you know, uh, the trickster. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of stuff in uh, Native American, um, you know, religion. The, the, the stories of the raven. Mm-hmm. You know, if you hear it, it means bad luck, and you know, not to go and hunt and all this sort of stuff. So, um, and I think it's interesting how it's still ingrained in our in our culture that you know you see, like, say for example, the character of Maleficent in Sleeping Beauty. She, her pet is a raven. Yeah. And she's like the embodiment of evil. Right. So, and then of course you have the famous po- poem by Edgar Allan Poe, The Raven, you know. Yeah, and Edgar Allan Poe is a creeper. <laughs> yeah, I was like, <laughs> and then we got on to him, that was a whole different thing. Um, but, um, yeah. yeah. But the, the occult loves ravens. Mm. And you're right, like every, so every, like not every, but Almost every ancient culture mm. has a flood myth mm. where the whole world was flooded. Yeah. And they also have identified the raven as a trickster and evil bird. Mm. And most cultures around the world have identified the dove as like a bird of peace. Yeah. Right? It's interesting to me that, like, Noah let out a raven and a dove, and, like, Mm. the raven, obviously, if you look at the King James Version of the Bible, which is, in my opinion, the most accurate, which they attempted to blow up in what? Uh, The 5th of November. That's right. We talked about that. Yeah. Oh, we're just, like, you know. Go watch our 5th of November V for Vendetta I, movie breakdown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like and subscribe and yeah. can check out our other videos here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Old school YouTube. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you click on the box up here, you'll see that I'll put the video there for you. <laughs> uh, bro fist. No. <laughs> All right. So. So back to the the movie. <laughs> so he goes to Iceland. Mm. He goes as a slave, mm. and there's lots of slavery that took place during these times. Yeah, I mean, which is weird because I was told nah, that. Nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. Well, the Vikings were very into the whole slave thing. You know, they yeah. like. Um, what they did basically they would go in and if you know if you were a man or a boy and they saw you as a threat you were killed but if they could make a profit out of you you know it's um, unfortunately like what they did and they made a lot of money out of it yeah and i thought it was really disgusting how they like burnt the whole village of children Mm. and women and like people it was just disgusting and like that's exactly how they were back in those days. I think we, you know, Vikings have been seen very much, um, you know, like the Kirk Douglas movie, the Vikings, where it's all very, like, I 
the Kirk Douglas again. But, you know, like... Or, like, in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, where if you kill innocents, you, like, are... It's, like, it, like, hurts your reputation in the yeah, video game. Like, but, back then, the Vikings would, like, get points for killing innocents, right? Yeah, yeah. So... Uh, yeah, it's, uh, Hollywood <laughs> likes to try and gloss over things and kind of make the Vikings out to be like, you know, the good guys. You know, they're kind of like fun, like pirates. Yeah. They went on boats and they wore funny hats. Hey, could... wait, pi- don't bring pirates into this. Pirates no, what I was trying to say guys. is that what um, <laughs> that's what Hollywood are trying to push that the yeah, Vikings yeah, yeah. are. Oh, just, they were just, just like, like us. They weren't like us. No. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> they were good sailors, though. We'll give mm. the Vikings that. Excellent sailors. And they were the first ones to find North America that were not Native Americans. Because there were human beings here the whole time. <laughs> 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 Turns out. <laughs> Anyways. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. So he goes back into the village, mm. right? And he's now with the actress from The Witch, the yeah. movie, right? It's yeah. the same actress. Yeah. So once um, again, really interesting casting choice. Yeah. I mean, right? she, I think she has, she, she just has that weird, like Nicole Goodman, like a weird supernatural sort of like witchiness to her. Yeah, definitely. She's definitely yeah. like kind I of I think she's a very good actress. Uh, yeah. Anna Taylor Joy is her name. Yeah, she's a good actress, yeah. yeah. Definitely good. Um, the witch must have been done first, because she looked older yeah, in this yes, movie. Yeah. yeah. Um, so he's there with her, and she's like, you're the brain, you're the brawn, I'm the brains, and we're going to like take these guys down together kind of yeah, thing. She's right? a, yeah. So then they start. She's like, you break their bodies, I'll break their minds type of thing. Yeah. So. Because, I mean. Do you think she's doing more that we're not seeing? I think she's telling him, like, how to do the various things he's doing. Hmm. Like, she knows, like, what will, like, trigger people into, yeah. like, being more scared. So when There's he, like... There's a lot of, like, the, when he mutilates the bodies. And, yeah, yeah, he doesn't just mutilate the bodies. He, he mutilates them in, like, a very... Uh, similar to, like what they used to teach people during the Phoenix program, mm. which was like a program to teach, uh, he desecrates them. That it's not just desecration. It's done to scare the local population. Yeah, which is that, is that So you happens, like yeah. murder someone, but then you arrange their body in a way that makes it look like it was done by like mythical local and spirits. You, and you take their heart out. Something yeah. That is, you know, like, meaningless to our current civilization like as I mean, far as still, missing no like, no i still feel like people would are still freaked out when they that you know when that happens i mean it's still like how jack the ripper you know stole, yeah stole um people's you know the, but to like the ancient viking people was like they considered the heart like your brain yeah so to so, them it was like a lot more important yeah right yeah. so it's interesting they considered a heart brain like a lot of his thing is he's not using his mind or he's, he's not using his intelligence he's very much driven by emotion yeah um which kind of be it's like the driving force of the drive factor behind most of his decisions you're just like oh geez would you just take a second to think about what you're doing no okay you're just gonna go and do this like you know <laughs> you're not gonna yeah. think about like, if you kill this person, what consequence is going to happen, you know? Um, well, of course, he, when he gets to the village, he discovers uh, his mom is very much happy with uh, his his new uncle slash stepfather. Yeah. <laughs> um, his um, mother's gone on to have another, another boy who she's more affectionate towards. And they, you know, even though his uncle has lost his kingdom, they still have a sort of a good setup. You know, he still has people who are loyal to him. He has like a sort of small community. He's like it's, starting over in Iceland. Yeah, and yeah. he's clearly got some sort of wealth because he's able to buy slaves. Mm-hmm. And um, they still seemed 
pretty healthy and you know the the build it he's teaching his he's a much better father right he's teaching his son how to you know his son complains his son which is likened to donald trump uh for say you know complain about doing slaves work which is the craziest line i've ever read in a review i mean i don't know how you can well, i'll disprove insert the... that into like it doesn't make sense that well, the boy I'll... doesn't embody when... okay so i'll massively. disprove the donald trump i mean you don't right need now. to anyone who's you know, sensible but... will All be right, like so the dad is building what a fence to... a wall Yes. He's building a wall. But he's And the son doesn't want to build a wall. What does Donald Trump want to do? He I wants know. to build the wall. So he's definitely not an embodiment of Donald <laughs> Trump because he doesn't want to build the wall. He wants to go pick flowers or God knows what they do back then. Probably pick flowers. <laughs> yeah, probably like pick what? flowers. Um, but yeah, it's just like, it just goes to show like people would need to get past the whole it's yeah it's a dumb comparison it does, it's like when there's so much more to say about the movie than that it's you clearly have missed the point of the movie when that's the only thing you can fixate on yeah. there's a throwaway line where the, the father's trying to instill a, a good message like you know you have to show that you are also a hard worker and you're yeah. willing to because he says you don't know what's going to happen from one season to the next yeah so the um, brother murdering, human trafficking, slave trader father's good message to his son was, <laughs> you also have to do slave labor like our slaves. So he was a pretty decent guy compared to the Northman character who came to kill him for killing his father, which was also his brother. Okay. All of the people in this movie I, are Everyone terrible. is awful, but I can't... I would drop a napalm bomb on all of these people. But do you think... <laughs> They're all pretty awful, but do they deserve what happens to them? And, you know, like... Yes! <laughs> well, yeah, I guess, you know, I guess so. Um, no, the child certainly doesn't deserve to die. Okay, yeah, the, the kid's okay. He didn't um, really do anything. Oh, okay, yes, the, the uncle is also trying to rape his slaves. The so. mom wanted an abortion. Yeah, she, she wanted an abortion. And it, her son was like in his thirties, so she still wants an abortion. She still, she was like, I want a fourth trimester. <laughs> Is it too late? How old are you? Thirty three. Let's let's go. <laughs> yeah. so there was like really no redeeming characters in this entire film. Uh. Other than the kid, the yeah. one, the kid was, I guess, okay. Like if but he, he was had, kind of a dumb brat too. Well, if he had survived, would he have then wanted revenge on the Northmen? Probably. Uh, and then, yeah. and then you know, it's like a vicious cycle where it's like, you know. You have a society where the only way to get into heaven is by killing other people, and, and everyone's then you're trying to like kill each killing other. your family members. <laughs> there's just death <laughs> everywhere, from what I saw in this movie. How yeah. how there's anyone even left? I don't know. I mean, they must have been also having <laughs> lots of un. Oh, that's all they could do is have unprotected sex. So I guess <laughs> you could kill or have sex. Yeah. There was like no other pastime oh, apart from that weird ball game. Do you want to go? <laughs> Which was also just murder. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It was like, we're going to put a ball in the field and now murder each other. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, they played a decent version of soccer, right? I guess you'd call that. It was nothing like It was like soccer. field hockey, but with actual, like, you know. Yeah. Before the NHL put a bunch of stupid rules in place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was like NHL 95 out there. <laughs> Like, that sort of... That's a moment that we see maybe he's, like, has some sort of emotions. He's, they, like, give his... That gives him his character a bit more depth. That scene because the young, his um, half-brother 
runs out. I don't it's still why he runs out to go and try and score. I mean, I, I guess that kid had never been to one of those matches before, and his parents were just like not going to tell him not to run out there. But he gets knocked unconscious. Yeah, and how did he just happen to run out there without anyone else running out after him? Because it's like a long way from it where they were watching it. It was quite a distance. He and teleported. He just immediate. teleported. His brothers weren't like... <laughs> the, the Ravens there picked he him goes. up and like He's flew running. In. He's now like 50 <laughs> yards away from us. What is he doing? He's going after... Maybe we should go. Should we go now? No, we're too busy. Nah, yeah. it'll be fine. Like... Teach him an important lesson. He won't be doing yeah. that again. Oh, no, that's for sure. He almost <laughs> never did anything again. <laughs> so the big man beast almost kills him. Mm -hmm. And then our hero, the Northman, comes in and... Does he kill the big beast Oh, guy, yeah. Or? He bashes him up. Yeah, he might be dead. And then after that, mm. the Northman dude... They're all, like, minding the, the young boy. He goes and stands directly at the bottom of a hill that's in the shape of a pyramid, mm. once again. Mm. Showing, like, the enlightenment and, like, the transcending up. And why is that? Because he saved the half-brother, which was still on the tree of life mm. right so like you the half brother was still a part of that like life tree the family tree mm. right that's why he i don't think he wanted to kill the mom or the brother he yeah. wanted to save them right mm. but he would have killed the mom mm. more readily than the brother he wanted yeah. to save the little brother oh yeah the brother's right? um death is accidental really isn't it because yeah. you know he d you can see in the moment that happens uh, he re regrets it. You know? Yeah, like instant regret, like mm -hmm. as he's doing it, like yeah. he's trying to get the kid off him. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> but what's interesting is that after that scene is he's he's rewarded, isn't he? He's told that he will have special privileges. Mm -hmm. he's, you know, he's still a slave, but he's like now going to be in control of people. He's going to be like head slave. Yeah. And there's this the all the slaves gather for like a, a weird sort of like dance and ritual type of thing again they're dancing around the fire that's when he gets it on with ogla yeah it's another uh sex ritual yeah. that's taking place which was like another famous uh sex ritual from like viking times that they depicted very accurately depicted it actually so I thought that was interesting. Mm. Uh, Eggers does do a really good job of like getting these things historically accurate from what we know. Mm. Um, from like other, I've seen other like depictions of that and like read about it. Like that's accurate to like what it was like. So it was pretty well done. Yeah. Um, so just people just dancing and yeah, naked and getting it on. Yeah, mm. but like the it was like an autonomous sort of nature to it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I thought that uh, after that was when, like, her and him really picked up, like, the psychological warfare and, like, the, mm. like, different planning of, like, the downfall of, like, the family, basically. Mm. And it was also interesting that the sword that he was given mm. um, was only able to operate in the night. So, like, it had to have moonlight on it. So, mm. like, it was powered by, like, the power of the occult. Yeah. Which is, like, the nighttime, right? Which he, I thought was, like, an interesting... Mm. He has to descend down into, like, the ship, which is buried. Yeah. So he has to go below. to go in and get it out of like a, yeah, yeah. The underground yeah like, and it's a weird trippy scene then because yeah. again like we were saying where does he see the, the the female witch earlier in the movie she's gone he has this whole weird i said it's almost like a video game you know where he has to do a boss fight yeah with this um skellington 
tall broom, sort of like Viking that's been buried with a sword and then be, you know does it beats him and then you see him picking the sword back up from the guy and he just completely like breaks Mark well, the full moon light. Yeah, like it's, it's, it never it's, even it happened. It never even happened. Again, it's like, yeah. like you've been saying, it's like a lot of this very strange, like the strange interactions that he has with the the witches and that yeah. incident. It's like, how much of it is... And see, I don't know if know, Eggers take... played Black Ops 3, but they did a <laughs> lot of that type of thing in that mm. game mm. where like you'd go through like a whole mission and then at the end it'd be like, never even happened. Yeah. Right? Mm. And then, like, that thing would, like, crumble like that. Yeah. So, yeah. like, I just, I find that interesting that, like, I don't know if, like, the powers that shouldn't be are trying to, like, uh, condition the public with something, or if this is, like, some sort of symbolism of, like... I don't know. It's, like, <laughs> maybe all this yeah. stuff, like, um, the Mandela effect, where it's, like, people were, you know... Reality's changing. Yeah. Like, a lot yeah. of it is just sort of, like, preparing us for something. You know, all this sort of, like, talk about these things, you know, and presenting it in movies and things is just... Getting people to start taking psychedelic drugs and things so they're, like, seeing, like, all these different weird realities. Like, Joe Rogan, like, pushes psychedelics mm -hmm. on everybody. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. It's interesting. Uh, so, they do... The ball game, yeah. and then they have... Sexy fire time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he has... There's sex with the witch, and then he declares chaos. Yeah. And she, like, performs, like, a weird earth ritual. Mm. Right? Where she's like, we're now one with the earth, and, like, chaos, and... Yeah all this i thought that was interesting because like in the bible it's like don't be one of the earth be like of heaven not of the earth like mm. you know like so these people are like doing the opposite of what you should as like a christian you're like they're like becoming one with like this reality instead of like the greater yeah thing about god right so they're like getting further into chaos <clears throat> And then the shepherd, oh, I thought this was interesting. So when they're in the, like, little village, mm -hmm. the the dad, like, the the husband now, the guy who killed his father, mm -hmm. right, the shepherd, yeah. they call mm -hmm. him a bunch of times, in the film, is doing, like, a little ritual mm -hmm. in the thing with uh, the statue of Odin. And he's doing a frere ritual, which is like a ritual to the wolf, mm. right? The the Fenrir wolf or whatever. Mm. And in comes the Northman guy carrying firewood, mm. like almost adding firewood to the fire. The wolf's coming in, like yeah. feeding the ritual, right, to mm. Fenrir, which is a ritual to chaos in Ragnarok, right? Mm. Of course, there's a scene where, um, you know, we've already briefly spoken to about it, but the uncle's oldest son um, is is murdered um, by uh, Aimleth, mm -hmm. and uh, his heart has been taken, and uh, you know the the shepherd, the uncle, uh, rounds up all of the. Uh, slaves and you know is going to he kills a few of them mm -hmm. um you know because he's trying to find out who's aiding um and that's when Amos comes back and he has the heart and he's like you know I'll let you have the heart if you let um uh, the, the witch go the, you know uh however he sort of says oh how you know the heart could be like a full 
was it like a wild dog or something you know he, or how do you know it's your son's heart and he's ca you know captured and beaten up mm -hmm. and uh, who aids his escape is Odin with he brings the ravens to um, you know peck the ropes and let the let the Northmen go so <laughs> That's a very interesting scene because we do see Odin and he looks like, you know, how he's depicted a lot as, you know, as a, a wizard almost, you know, mm -hmm. like an old man with a cloak. You warrior maiden, fly me to your shining gates. And a, a beard. Yeah, how you'd expect to see him, but like he kind of forms out of the ravens mm. it's like a really well done scene that's like one of my favorite scenes in the movie actually because it's yeah. so like just well done like it's really cool mm. um and yeah like you see him form out of the ravens and all of that and he, he gets let down out of the cross yes right yeah. i thought it was interesting that um the northman guy when he like did the killings to like scare everyone mm. in the Iceland village he like made the first victims into a cross mm. and then the second guy was hung upside down mm. in a cross shape and if you look at like a lot of like satanic symbols a lot of times what they do is they take the cross and they turn it upside down yes yeah right I, so it was kind of like you know similar like with Rosemary's baby at the end with the the cross is hanging upside down over over the cradle. Yeah, and then he had a human sacrifice, mm. like, underneath the upside-down cross. And there's, like, just tons of human sacrifice in this movie. Yeah. Like, if Eggers is trying to show you anything, he's trying to show you that these, like, ancient pagan religions are not very good. Mm. Like, he's definitely not painting them at a in a good light. Right. No, no, and I think it's it's interesting again when uh, they have the um, the oldest son's uh, funeral, the father and the youngest son are sort of um, covered in blood. Mm -hmm. They have the blood splashed onto them by the the mother, mm -hmm. and then the the uncle becomes completely butt naked. Yeah, uh, it's just like the weirdest stuff ever. Isn't it? <laughs> he's delivering his speech. How he's like going to, you know, get revenge and everything, and he's like stark naked. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, okay, any chance they just want to be covered in blood and be naked? Yeah, it's just constant like weird ritualistic. Mm. Like what? What point of like taking? the blood of a sacrificed person and a sacrificed like goat or something it was a horse or a horse yeah like... and then covering yourself in the blood and then screaming naked like how does that empower you or is that just ancient ritualistic nonsense it's also very like it must get really sticky and it's just gross, gross. Yeah, it's like, like... I don't, I don't know. Of course, we have our favourite scene in the entire movie uh, coming up. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, scene. yeah. You were in <laughs> stitches when it happened, so obviously. Um, so, yeah, him and the, the How do you want to girl. describe this scene? Because it's, it's so... Unless you watch the movie, it's yeah, so, so... Him you won't realise how funny it is when it happens. Him and Witch Girl are escaping together. Right, and they're gonna oh, escape to a new land. He's, yeah, they're like we're they're gonna, sailing away. Yeah, Everything's good. He's got. He's not worried about it at all. He's like, I'm good. I got this new chick. She's really into him for some yeah, odd reason. She's totally though. into him. He's into her. They're sailing away. They're gonna yeah, start a new that's life. Nice. That's a happy and she's ending. like, your wounds. It is nothing to what we have endured. I have forgotten it already. Hey, babe, guess what? He's like, you want to do this? You, you do the... <laughs> I'm, I, I'm pregnant. Oh, shit. 
Uh, <laughs> my fate has determined uh, no, I no, need... No, hold, hold on, I'm pregnant with twins. You, oh. you know, he's, he kisses her and it's a wound and he sees a family tree and it's like, he sees Oh yeah, twins. he's like... I my family's blood. My own blood is inside you. I see twins in your future, my dear. He's like... Why? I also saw in my future when I did that, mm. me in all of my gear, <laughs> including my heavy sword and my shield that will make me sink like a rock to the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> I'm out. See you later. I'm going to jump <laughs> off the boat. You're preggers. I'm leaving. <laughs> I don't care what's going on. I'm yeah. off this motherfucking Jeez. boat. <laughs> escape our fate. No! No! Yeah, it's just, he's just like, no, no. I, I have to go, I, I have to go deal with my fate. Yeah, I need to go and, <laughs> you know, he'll just keep, she's like, no, we'll go find somewhere where he can't find us. No, he'll definitely keep coming. Yeah, back. he's coming. We can cut our hair, I, we can, you know, change our names. We can do plastic surgery yeah, and move no, to Florida. She, she's like giving him all these like, yeah, it's okay, <laughs> we can do all this. He's like, no, no, he'll keep he'll keep looking for us. I, just, I gotta go back right yeah. now. I can't keep, I, can't. I, I just can't stay on this boat. Now that I know you're pregnant, I gotta go. <laughs> if you but knew of this, he would hunt you with all the fire of the gods. It cannot wait. Stop this. <laughs> do I wait, wait? Do I wait for the the sailor to bring me to shore? That's like a few miles that way. <laughs> no, I gotta go now. Like, I'm, I'm just jumping off this boat. <laughs> it's the funniest reaction to finding out like your girlfriend's pregnant I've ever seen in a movie. <laughs> Okay, dude's on a little Viking boat miles off the coast. Yeah, finds out his girlfriend's pregnant. That water's got to be cold as Just well. Some, yeah, it's like the North Sea. <laughs> He's got his sword and a, like all this metal shit that will sink him to the bottom like that. Yeah. He's like, fuck it, I'm out anyways. <laughs> <I'm out>. <laughs> <laughs> Makes no sense. It doesn't. Okay. So then he gets back to the village, mm. and what, like he just starts like howling. Right. Mm. right? Which drives all the dogs crazy mm. in the village, and the dogs start like attacking their owners. Yeah. And then. Which is, yeah, again, really interesting because we've spoken about this before how like the hounds of attacking people and what they you know the devil taking on you know uh black the shape dogs of the and, hound yeah. And, yeah and i said it about the... like remember when the omen and yeah. the the <laughs> the dogs turning on their handlers and the stunt men and be biting them so it's like really you know and in the the movie the witch the goat like turned on the actors and like broke one of the actors' ribs. That's so crazy. I feel like, right. I was like what ever happened to that goat? Do you think it, they just like it was too wild or just let it loose? The main actor probably like turned it into like I don't know. Can you eat goat? I don't think so. Yes, you but, can eat goat. You can. Uh, goat that's probably. what happened to that goat. <laughs> <laughs> Black Philip got eaten by the actor whose ribs it broke. In the like goat stew. Probably yeah. So, anyways, yeah, I mean, I thought that was interesting with, mm. like, that symbolism there. They come back and, like, you have, like, the, once again, he's using his animal altar to, like, drive the yeah. dogs crazy. Um, and they all go nuts and attack their owners. He gets his revenge on the nose, nose guy. Yeah, he kills the nose guy. You know, like, the grossest, horrible way where he's, like, putting his sword through the remainder of his nose. He's, like... You know, come to claim the rest of it or something along those yeah, lines. Yeah. But I thought like yes, he's um he uh confronts his mother uh, or his mother and his 
it's already confronted her, but then his his mother and uh, his half brother are hiding in the closet. And I don't know why is it with people in this movie. They could just like have a perfect opportunity to stay hidden, and like nope, I'm gonna just jump out and attack you. She could have just stayed hidden. Yeah, he never would have. Especially the half brother. The half brother. I don't even think he would have killed the half brother. He would have just loved him, let yeah. him be. Yeah. I think. I mean, I don't know for sure. But then, yeah, they have the final battle, right, between yeah, him and the shepherd, mm-hmm. right? And it's a pretty epic final battle scene, I'd say. Don't you think? Yeah. It's, pretty, it's pretty epic. I think. Yeah. yeah, it is. It wasn't too Again, long. they get naked. Yeah, it's I mean, it's, it's a Greek epic. They have to, or not, it's not Greek epic, but it's like, you know. Yeah. Uh, ancient epic, so they have to be shirtless and naked. I mean, yeah. And there had to be lava and like a <laughs> volcano and all mm. that. that mm. It like had to happen. It was like pretty epic. They did that. I thought it was really cool. Yeah. Um, and it was a good fight scene too. Like it was fairly believable. It wasn't like, you know, some fight scenes mm-hmm. are like really stupid. Yeah, I think what's interesting right. about this movie is that the, I guess if, I'm gonna say he's an antihero, but our main, you know, our main character. Um, he's not he, an antihero. He's a villain. <laughs> okay. The, the main character is a villain. Um, he is he, he just get like you see him getting bloody and injured and everything in this movie and he he does die at the end and like you can see he's already been stabbed and the wounds are you know he's not gonna heal mm. um so it's kind of course he gets to you know die in in battle um but uh, it's it's interesting as well that um because when he <laughs> discovers that he's going to have twins his um it's going to be the maiden king mm-hmm. you know the woman king the woman king uh one of his like one of his twins um not the boy but the girl is going to be the one to yeah become a i guess a viking queen or, or something, something yeah. like that or if Hollywood had it to do it, it would be the woman Viking King. <laughs> it was a bit of like, a, I guess, like, was she, I don't know, was she born first or something? Because if it was just, I just don't understand why. Maybe have, she went and took over another kingdom. Yeah, maybe the boy didn't survive. But I, we do yeah. see a shot of um, Olga with the twins and they seem healthy and happy because he's like, dies and he, does cry because remember we he's not been able to cry he's not supposed to have cried yeah his last tear was taken away from him as a child or something and then he's allowed to cry because you know only you know if you're a man not allowed to cry men are not allowed to cry according to andrew tate that's no that's for pussies but you only get to cry when you you're dying okay once odin gives you back your tears yeah then you can cry yeah even though if you read the odyssey or any like ancient like um you know mythology you you find out that the the heroes do cry you know Odysseus wept for his home when he was stuck on the island with um I can't remember who he's stuck on but the uh Circe I think or something the mm. uh he was on the island with a goddess for seven years and he was still bloody crying about how much he missed home had this goddess who just wanted to sleep with him and he was like no I've just I've had enough I just want to go home so um I have a good cry at least once a day (laughs) today was about you know couldn't find my car keys yesterday it was about (laughs) life not being fair the day before that it was about just my emotions (laughs) (laughs) what I'm saying is it's like um I think it's weird that the, like... The day before that, it was the time of the month, you know? I just have cries every day. Okay. No, but I want to say, I'm trying to, like, be an advocate here for, like, 
mental health and men's mental health. I know, I'm I think just it's teasing. like a really bad way to, you know, that the this film has been picked up by, you know, certain people. Certain people, and it's been like, oh, you know, this is embodiment of true masculinity. It was like, okay, if you, you know, I yeah. do agree, agree that this, in a way, is a toxic depiction of masculinity because he's, you know, not a. He's not a, a doing it. He's not using his masculinity for a good outcome. He's, no. he's just driven by revenge. Yeah, There's no. Just, and, and then when he gets a chance to actually have happiness and, you know, have a chance of having a family, he bells on them straight away. You know, like yeah. okay, that's that's really something to aspire to. But the, at the end of the movie, he goes to Valhalla, does he not? Yeah. But... So describe the ending then. Uh, he kills the guy. He kills his yeah. He his, gets his his enemy. Head. He chops his head off. Yeah. But he also gets a sword through the heart. Yeah. So he dies. Yeah. So he yeah. And, that is and then what happens? And he goes. Um, you describe it how you describe it. Now I'm going to describe it my way. That's why I'm. That's why we're doing this. It's a little experiment. No, I, I mean I. He, Describe uh, like uh, the horse scene where he gets picked up by the horse. He gets right? picked up the horse, and yeah. then he gets. Uh, they ride into the gates of Valhalla, and it's, the gates of Valhalla. Yeah. Yeah. Where did he die, though? What do they keep calling it? Uh, I can't remember. The gates of what? Oh, he dies in the gates of hell. He dies at the gates, gates of, of hell, hell, which is the murdering someone. Yeah, he right? dies in a, voca a volcano, and then an or angel on a white horse rides him to heaven. She's not. She's a. Valkyrie, isn't she? She's like doing a battle cry. It's not. They're not. They're not seen as being a good thing. No. Um, if you do look through Norse mythology, they're actually like the embodiment of death, and they're not like supposed to be seen as like these beautiful. She wasn't very beautiful. She was no, kind of scary looking. Yeah, but the, the people have seen try and see them now in how they're depicted in like Marvel movies. I hate mm. to bring it up again, but like it's been cool and badass and like a uh, girl power and slay, slay queen. Um, <laughs> I really hate Marvel movies, yeah. but, but they're not meant to be seen as beautiful creatures who are them. They were like there on the battlefield to like prey on the dying. So, yeah. Um, but yes, it's a, you think it's a, a good ending because he's gloat. We think he's going to heaven because he's ascending upwards. Because we see that as like seeing the gates opening and the light coming. And that's like for us, like when you see people going to heaven, that's like they're always going above and the the lights, you know, it's a light, airy sort of. That's place. how Hollywood depicts yeah. it. Yeah. Um. So you would be thinking that's the same here with like how the Vikings, but mm -hmm. that's not like you said he's fighting at the gates of hell so <laughs> all right so where am i going with this uh, right i mean you're implying that he's not going to heaven he's going to okay a warped so, version of it <clears throat> no so hollywood depicts heaven constantly as going into the light right mm. go into the light go always it's always depicted as a mm. blinding white light what is lucifer described as in the bible but a blinding white light, right? And he, uh, Lucifer can depict himself as an angel of light, right? So when people have studied, like, near-death experiences, mm. generally there's two types of near-death experiences that take place. One is which, you know, you wake up and you see, like, family members, people you recognize... And you're going on a journey somewhere together with, like, your family members and people that you love. Hmm. And it's a very warm, kind feeling. And, like, you're going on a train or you're going on a bus somewhere. You don't know where you're going, but you're going with people 
you want to be with, that you mm -hmm. recognize from your life. Right. Okay? Yeah. It's very happy, loving. That's one, you don't want to wake up from this. Okay? Yeah. That's one description people have given over and over again from their near death experiences that like nurses recorded. Okay? Mm -hmm. The other version that people see is they wake up in, they see themselves in like the third person. They're like in the hospital room mm -hmm. looking down on themselves and they see like hospital people trying to save them or whatever. And then they see like something or someone they don't recognize out in the hallway, like directing them towards them, right? And you start going towards that like bright individual or bright light. Mm -hmm. And then you realize that you're like in a tunnel heading towards a bright light, right? So you start going, oh, towards the light, right? And you have like things that you don't recognize kind of guiding you towards it, like being like, go towards the light, follow us, come to the light. And then as you get closer and closer to the blinding white light, it all of a sudden starts getting dark. And then you're in like an empty, vast darkness of just never ending darkness falling and falling. And that's what people mm. like feel mm. is like this dread from it. Right. Mm. And like, then people have described worse things happening after that. Like, but that's like kind of like the two different paths. Right. Mm. And the path that's always towards like going towards the light in these near death experiences always ends up being horrible. It kind of makes right. sense when you think of like, um, it's, a, it's very deceiving. Yeah. Uh, it's very much like... So like, is that what's being depicted at the end of the movie? Is he going to the... He's being ushered to the light by like... Yeah. The Valkyrie. Mm. Right? It's for murdering someone. Yeah. It's not like would, that. Would God reward someone for the life no, the Northman lives? No, um, because he's supposed to, you know, the, the Bible... Uh, teaches forgiveness like he should yeah. forgive him if, if he if he was um to do the right thing he would forgive his mother he would forgive his uncle he would do he would not bail out on his family yeah he would have he wouldn't have done any of the things that if no. he was really but wanted he, to be on a path of redemption he would have he would have done something redeeming at the you know like he would have like gone classical. with the family yeah. to a new land mm. and like repented all the bad things he had done and mm. like tried to like make up for his horrible life by raising two children the right way. Instead, it's just like, oh, yeah. Um, I hope I hope things turn out for you. You know, here's a here's some gold. Good luck with that. I'll see you later. I'm gonna go try to die by fighting someone in combat. See ya. <laughs> Like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, and his reward is going to heaven, but you mm. don't see what heaven is. You just see him kind of going towards it. Yeah. Right? So I think that's what the symbolism there is at the end. Mm. That's kind of what I saw. Yeah. So it's like depicted as something good, but really it's something bad. Mm. Right? So. Yeah. That's the Northman. That's the Northman. <laughs> So, yeah. I, yeah, I really, like, I find this an interesting film. I think a lot of people, um, general people, um, have missed the point of this movie. Yeah, I don't think anyone's covered any of the things no, we talked about. No, um, and I think, I mean, I find, like, the Norse mythology very interesting. Um, and it's, what's... I just see this like same pattern in like Greek mythology and Roman mythology, and Norse mythology that the gods are really awful, mm -hmm. right? They're um, they're like the worst versions of humans mm -hmm. of like mankind. You know, they're just like jealous. They're always giving in to lust and temptation, and um, they're like they give you something but then take away something else you know it's ne like never it's you know their rewards aren't given to the people who deserve them you know yeah it's so um yeah i, I think uh, it's interesting that there seems to be a lot of like 
Norse mythology nowadays, it seems cool to, it's like trendy and hipster, you know, to sort of like... Yeah. That's because it's paganism, and mm. which is like closer to Satanism, and the Luciferian elite who run Hollywood and all the media are like, mm. yeah, I'd rather have people into Vikings and stuff and then Christianity, so... Yeah. That's just in my opinion. Anyway, but, uh, yeah, that's our review of The Northman. I, I really enjoyed this movie. Um, unfortunately, there's only one more Eggers movie to do, which is The Lighthouse, which I think Yeah, we I think we're going to do that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, maybe he not needs next, to, but we He needs to that. make some more movies. Yeah, well... well yeah, because, like, if you're watching this, come on. Come on, make some more stuff. <laughs> Go on, Robert. Make some more movies. <laughs> But, um, but yeah, we have plenty more movies to review. Oh yeah, so. we've got tons. I know we're going to do a review of like Clockwork Orange, mm -hmm. we got to do one of Dune, we want to do the Terminator movies. Yeah, we we'll do... There's a whole bunch There's you a want whole to bunch do. and people the Lighthouse, have suggested obviously. stuff. And we're, of course we're going to revisit The Shining after watching Room 237 because even though the documentary wasn't great. We picked up stuff that from the documentary, <laughs> from the documentary yeah. that nobody was paying attention to. So we were just yeah. like, okay, let, where is this going to take us? So I think we, you, well, not we, I should say you decoded a major part mm. of the infamous last image mm. of the 1921 ball. Yes. So yeah. someone figured it out here I know. <laughs> so anyways we should be we'll do a room 237 review slash yeah. shining review it'll yeah, be like a combined yeah. one soon I think it will so. be called debunking room 237 or yeah or something like that something because like that, yeah. it's the <laughs> we'll just call it a review of room 237 and we'll debunk it while reviewing yeah it. yeah so that'll probably be one of the next ones we do yeah so thank you all for watching Remember, we do have a Patreon mm, um, if you want to join. Yes, yeah, so I can go to so. do some stuff about ravens and mythology so, and, you know, breaking down some further information um, based on the research that I found. So it would be, like, really great if um, people want to check that out. And, you know, I would love to share that with people. And remember to like and subscribe. Thank you all for watching. Bye. Take care, everyone. Bye. <laughs>